This episode is action-packed. We meet the Dream Guards, write a song with our very own Tim Minchin and hang out on the helicopter pad with the courageous Rescue 500. Prepare for takeoff. My name's Helen and welcome to Drift TV. We've got some very special guests coming up on today's show. But first, let's check out what happened at our Halloween party. Yes, my little monsters. It was a wicked day of ghoulish games, freaky fun and frightening dancing. Hosted by our very creepy friends, Ollie and Jono from Toasted TV. My name is Pablos. And my name is Harry. Welcome it's to the, the Halloween party! Hi, Skull, what do we have here? This is a Technic Lego spider for Halloween. So it moves with all the gears and axles. How does it work? How does it work? Well, it's actually remote control. So this little remote control here controls it. All right, so it's, you can press the red button and it stops and then you turn it and it goes again. So all the little gears and remote controls. Can it, go fast? it can go fast. Look how fast that's going. And then we can stop it. How long did it take? Well, it took about 30 minutes to make. So it doesn't Oh, take much. cool. Mm, we can make lots of things as well. So that comes out of a kit. We can make about 2000 builds just with that one kit. Oh, cool. Build. Yeah. Mike, is this your truck? Yeah, this is my truck. This is a Mercedes G-Wagon. We use this to drive out field in the army and uh, do all sorts of four-wheel driving and activities in. Hey, Mark, tell us about your costume today. Well, this is a body armour system. Uh, as you can see, it's got lots of pouches on it so I can hold all sorts of different things. I've got some magazines here. Uh, I've got some pouches so I can keep notepads and pens. I've got a first aid kit. And in this pouch on the back, I've got water, which comes out of this hose on the front here, just like this. Nope, oh, there we go. Oh, cool. Hi, Lauren, what's this creepy critter? This is Cuddles, and Cuddles is called a black-headed python. You can see that black, shiny head. That's where he gets his name. Is he dangerous? Is he poison? Well, he doesn't have poison. He doesn't have venom either, so he's not venomous. He's a type of python, so that means he uses his strong, muscly body to wrap around the animal that he wants to eat, so he's not venomous. But if he gave you a bite, it would still really, really hurt, so you don't want to go touching snakes in the wild. Cuddles, are you enjoying the party? Tell us about your costume, Cuddles. He said, awesome. <laughs> what do you like about the party? I like the snakes because they're cool. It was awesome party, isn't it? Yeah. Now it's time to go to dance. Bye, everybody. What did they eat? Ice cream! <laughs> <laughs> well, the Children's Hospital Foundation sure knows how to throw a party. Now, guys, I would like to introduce you to some of our heroes. Have you ever wondered what on earth is happening when things get really, really noisy and a helicopter lands on the top of the Lady Salento Children's Hospital? Well, we are on the roof and we're about to find out. Good morning everyone, boys and girls and uh, mums and dads and carers at the Lady Slinto Hospital. 
Um, thanks very much for inviting us today in our helicopter rescue 500 from Queensland Government Air to come and visit you on the hospital helipad. We're really excited to see you all. So the helicopter you're looking at is called an Augusta Westland. It's made in Italy and it weighs about seven tonnes. So it's really, really heavy. In order to fly, we've got to have two very, very powerful engines. So has everyone seen a horse? Everyone know what a horse looks like? And you know how strong a horse is, okay? Well, this helicopter has 1,872 horses in each engine. Okay, so you imagine 1,872 horses all strung out. That's how powerful these engines are, and there's two of them, okay? So it flies really fast in the air. The helicopter has TV screens up the front, so it's a very, very modern helicopter. They're electronic flight screens, and we can monitor everything we do on board the aircraft. With this machine as well, we can fly for about four hours in the air non-stop if we need to, so we can go a long distance in order to get to people. So if you might live out way out on a farm property somewhere out in the middle of Queensland, we can fly out there and pick you up very quickly. We also do winch jobs. Now on the other side of the helicopter when we walk around there, you'll see our winch set up, which is a big uh, cable with a hook on the end of it. And we can lower that down to people that might be in the water or trapped or lost in the bush and winch them back up into the helicopter and help them. If we need to, we can put them in a stretcher and get them on board the aircraft. Hello, my name's Mark. I'm a rescue helicopter pilot and I fly the Queensland Government Air Rescue Helicopter. My job is to run the helicopter and make sure everything's doing what it should be doing when we're flying in the sky. It's a really interesting job and I love what I do. It's the best job in the world and I look out the best office window in the world. really important job. What is a normal day to you? Well, we don't really have a normal day, Michaela. Every day is different. Like some days we come in and we don't even get to have breakfast before we go out on the job. But other days we might come in and get time to wash the helicopter and check all our gear. And then we might take off straight away and go and rescue someone out in the bush or out in the ocean or even go to another hospital and help someone that needs extra special care. So every day is very, very different in the helicopter rescue world. How many people can go on a rescue? Well, we have a, a crew of five on board the helicopter, Michaela. We have a pilot, which is my job, so to fly the helicopter. We have a, an air crewman who does the winching and helps me up the front. We have a rescue crewman who goes down on the wire into the water or into the bush to help people that are sick. And then we carry a doctor and a paramedic. So everyone's got a, a specific role, but we all help each other to try and get the job done. So if anyone's sick, we all pitch in and help. That's the main part of our job, and we love that. How do you do on a boat when you're used to the helicopter? Yeah, well, winching on the boat's really the most challenging thing we do, because the water's moving and the boat's moving. So we try and um, hover really close to the boat, and then we lower a man down on the winch cable so that they can um, help the people that are sick on the boat, or if the boat's sunk, they might be taken out of a life raft. Um, and sometimes we even um, winch into mountains like Mount Barney and places like that where bushwalkers get lost. Hello, my name is Cameron. I'm the rescue crewman on board the aircraft. My primary role is to be lowered on the winch cable, down into the ocean or onto land to perform rescues of lost or injured personnel. My favourite part of working on Rescue 500 is helping people in need whether we're rescuing people out of the ocean or lost in the bush or injured in the bush, we get to rescue them and take them to medical aid where they can be treated and become better. Okay, well the light is called a, a night sun tracker beam and you can see the lens down there. That generates um, about 30 million candle power. So you know how many candles you had on your last birthday cake. Can you imagine 30 million candle power? So it's really, really bright, yeah incredibly bright at night, so it'd light up a really dark area like a footy oval for us to land in if someone was sick and we needed to help them. So Mikala, that's the winch handle that the, the crewman, our winch operator, uses to make the cable go up and down. 
to rescue someone on the ground. So it's got that red trigger there and you can see it pulls in and out like that. Oh. And that makes the cable go up and down to rescue people. What are all those bags for? Well, those bags have all our medical equipment and if we need to give someone some medicine, it's all contained in those bags, Michaela. So a lot of specialist stuff that you'd see in the hospital here, we carry on board the helicopter to help the sick people um, and some specialist stuff for kids as well. So it's really, really good. It's got everything you need to save someone's life. My name's Andrew, I'm the doctor on the rescue helicopter. And my name's Mark, I'm the critical care paramedic on the, on the aircraft. My job is similar to the job that I do when I'm working on an ambulance and looking after people on road and in their homes, transporting them to hospital. But it's just like using a, a different type of ambulance, using the helicopter. We can get further, we can get into places we can't get with ambulances. So it just enhances our ability to look after, look after more people who are in trouble. If you hold that with your right hand, that's the control that we use to steer the helicopter with. So it won't move now because it's all hydraulically driven. But wherever I push this stick, that's the way the rotor disc travels and goes in a specific direction. So it's pretty cool. On behalf of our team, Risky 500, we'd like to thank you and all the kids here at the Lady Slento for having us come and visit you today. It was a real pleasure to meet you. Um, we think you're all very, very brave, and we're hoping to see you all fit and well in the near future. So good on you, Caleb. Thanks for coming, buddy. Thanks for seeing us. How cool is that to take a look into the lives of some everyday heroes? Make sure you're watching next week when we get even closer to this magnificent life-saving machine. Well, wow, thanks to the Rescue 500 team for an awesome experience. Now let's go to the party deck and meet the Dream Guards. Get ready for the countdown. <laughs> We are the Dream Guards. My name is Michael, and this bubbly lady right here is Donna. Hi, <laughs> boys and girls. As Dream Guards, our job is to make sure that your dreams and your ideas are safe and secure. Exactly. And we're also, we're here to ignite you, to inspire you, and we're going to energise you. And we're going to make you believe. Believe, believe in, in yourself. yourself. We're here to teach you your imagination is the most amazing tool that you have now or will ever have in your life. That's right. Yeah. Why is that, Michael? Well, your imagination enables you to paint pictures and see pictures in your mind of things you have not yet witnessed or seen. Wow. Is that a little bit like drawing on paper? No, no, no. no. That's a lot like drawing on paper. But you just don't need paper, pens, crayons, chalks or blackboard. You just use the pictures in your mind to create them and create your dreams. Did you know that your imagination is just a preview of life's journey to come? And our dream? Our dream. A bully free, free world. world. I learned today that you should never bully people. The show today was amazing and I learned that it's okay um, to walk away when someone's bullying you. Oh, I had a fun time and at least I can walk away knowing that everyone has been bullied and we can stand up and fight it. And I liked how they played the jokes and the big hill hook when he went like this. <laughs> We empower children such as yourself to stand up to bullying in a powerful and positive way. But right now, we're going to catch up with one of our juiced stars, Jordan, and some, some music, music therapy. therapy. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jordan, and this is Tim, Hi. easily one of the top, best top three, maybe even top two music therapists in the whole world. So, Tim, 
What was your first instrument you ever learned? My first instrument, Jordan, was the violin when I was about eight years old. Um, but I've played heaps of different instruments since then, like saxophone and drums and guitar, banjo, harmonica, all kinds of things. Well, really, I, I learned violin too. You learned violin? Yeah. For how long? Oh, uh, three, four years. Okay, cool. Well, I didn't know that about you. Why, why did you want to become a music therapist? Well, I wanted to become a music therapist because I really love to play music and I really like how music can um, change the way people feel and make them, to, um, make them feel good about themselves, bring them together to become, I guess, close to other people. And so I really liked the music side of things and I really liked the idea of helping people. So uh, music therapy for me was like a perfect combination of those two things. That sounds really cool. For me, music therapy is actually a way of remembering things. Uh, thanks to my grandparents who brought me in a little um, rabbit six years ago for Easter. Um, after hearing it play its little tune like three times, I can remember off by heart. Over articulating. Slow down, slow down, make every word count. After you started having problems with your memory, that was one of the first things where they where you realise, oh, hang on, this is, this is going to help me to remember yeah, things? Yeah, exactly. So, Jordan, can you remind me, why do you have difficulties with your memory? Um, I have difficulties with my memory because um, when I was 11, I actually had a stroke in the middle of my brain, and then the year after, it turned out I had a brain tumour. OK. But then it wasn't until two years ago that they figured out the proper diagnosis, and that's that my tumour is vascular, so it likes to bleed. OK. So the, yeah. And so because of that... that have... Because of that, I have the problems with my memory, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the part of your brain um, that normally takes care of your short-term memory might be ha is having problems, but, but we can use music to kind of find a new way around. Exactly. Yeah. My favourite thing about music therapy is the fact that you, you create something. You create something? So, yeah. yes, the song, the, the, like the rhythm's already made, mm -hmm. but you get to put words over the top of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're putting your own twist to a song. So, Jordan, one of my favourite songs that we wrote together was called Oncologist World's Best. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah, so that's a song that we made up about my favourite doctor, my oncologist. Yeah, what's his name? Dr Nichols. Okay. So and, and didn't he do something really good, something really, like, um, important for you? Like... Yeah, he, um, he actually got me in Make-A-Wish. Make-A-Wish Foundation. So it was yeah. thanks to him that we actually went to London. So, Jordan, how about we play it? Yeah, it sounds good. Cool. I turned 18 to old peeps, if you know what I mean. Transitioning to adult care, and I got a few things that I'd like to share. Gonna miss Cy Captain's Wonder Factory, not sure if I'll get more music therapy. Out of all the things I'll miss, one that beats the rest is the guy with the mug on Colgis World's Best. Alright Jordan, so um, I reckon we should maybe write another song. Yeah, sure. What do you want to make it about? It's up to you. It's not, you're you're um, the patient, I'm the therapist. Uh, why don't we make it about like um, the hospital and like how much I'm going to miss and stuff? Me the hospital? Okay. So do you reckon Eka, do you think he's going to miss getting out of the house and coming to the hospital? Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, so, so if Eka's going to, maybe we can write a song like from Eka's perspective instead of from your perspective. Alright, that sounds that's actually a really good idea. Do you want to just try and make up some words? Yeah, sure. Hi, my name's Echo. I sleep a lot. Everywhere I go, yes, I sleep a lot. Buses, home, school as well. But the number one place that I think is swell is the hospital. The hospital that is the place that I'll miss the most.
encourage you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. Wow. Thanks, guys. Now let's go back to Dreamland where I'm going to show us some awesome tricks. Hi, boys and girls. How are you? It's Michael back again. Michael from the Dream Guards. I'm going to show you something a little bit exciting with an amazing message, all right? With these three pieces of rope, all right? This is the message in the story. It doesn't matter how small you are. It doesn't matter how big you are or in between. All right, what we have to do is just stick together, all right? If we stick together with peace, love, and respect. If we do these three things and pull together, you'll see and realize that we are all just the same. Oh yeah, there is no small, there is no big or in between. We are just the same. I'll put that guy to the side for a second. Now, as we go through this life and stand tall and proud by yourself, you have to know that each and every one of us, each and every one of us, we weren't born to fit in. Oh no, we were born to stand out. Okay, put this to the side for a second. And as we go through the circle of life, the circle of life, which is like the world, it's like, it's round like the, <laughs> well bro. Okay, as we go through the circle of life, always remember to look outside the box. Always remember to look outside the box and always, always follow your dreams. <laughs> yeah, follow your dreams like the seagull, bro. <laughs> it's like a seagull. <laughs> and what's the seagull's dream? Seagull's dream is to always get the chip, bro. <laughs> and the seagull always gets the biggest, longest chip, bro. So today, tonight, when you get home, when you get back to your room, I want you to connect with your whanau, your family, your family and your friends. I want you to do that and always remember peace, love and respect. Because it doesn't matter how small you are, how big you are or in between. We are all the same. Peace, love and happiness. Thank you. Well, thanks, Dream Guards. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. Hello, everyone. It's Gandalf here. And I, I remember I've still got some ones to give out, so I'll make sure you go on to juicetv.com.au or their Facebook page. See you on the next show, guys. Bye. Remember, guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also, head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.